All right, and for our first talk today, we have Juliet Waters, who's the Chief Knowledge Officer at Kids Code Jeunesse. Uh, take it away, Juliet. Thanks, Josh. So I'm here to talk about empowering kids for the ethics of AI. So think about since the time you purchased your first smartphone, and I mean your smartphone, not your first Nook phone. A, an entire generation of kids has grown up that will never know a world not mediated by AI algorithms. So why is this important? Well, for one thing, AI in kids is a very serious business. A report that was released about a year ago by the Pew Research Center showed that YouTube content targeted and featuring children is three times more popular than any other content on the web. So this is Ryan of Ryan's World. A couple of years ago when Ryan was making a mere $11 million a year as a toy reviewer. Last year, Ryan made about $26 million a year, making him the highest paid YouTuber on YouTube. So in September, as some of you might know, Google and YouTube paid out a fine of $170 million for violating COPPA, which is the uh, Children's Online Privacy Protection Act. They were using Google algorithms to, tar you know, to, to get data on how long kids were watching videos, uh, how often they needed fresh content, how much they liked familiar content, all this kind of stuff to make sure that videos that are like Ryan's were being targeted uh, at a captive audience. On the same day that Google announced this, a complaint was launched against Ryan's parents for failure to disclose that he was being paid by toy companies um, and for algorithms that really often weren't working. I mean, his target audience of three to six year olds was getting ads for Carl Jr.'s and ads for R-rated movies. So, I mean, just, you know, again, to put this in context, I mean, Ryan right now is eight years old. So this is, this is a pretty, you know, quite heavy uh, agenda here. Um, so another thing that's really important to know is that these kids being born into this world, they don't know that their parents weren't born into it. They don't necessarily understand that their parents might not understand how these algorithms work. So we are a Canadian charity that started in 2013, working with teachers, with kids, with parents, to really come up with viable lesson plans so that adults and kids could learn to code together. We started with simple code, um, the kind of stuff you'd see in some of the resources that are available for, for schools today in elementary school. Um, but we also started about a couple of years ago to really, really get very interested with the challenge of how we were going to explain AI to kids and their parents and how we were going to help them to conceptualize AI algorithms and how those algorithms were imp impacting the digital world an environment that they were living in. So we came up with a YouTube video. So this was something we worked on with the Canadian division of UNESCO. And we created this video that uh, we were hoping to launch in March of this year. Uh, we were all set to launch it at a conference in Paris, uh, a UN conference with researchers uh, in education coming in from all around the world. And um, this was the beginning of March, so you can guess where this story ends. This was one of the first conferences that was canceled because of COVID. And uh, this was early enough that there wasn't really any plan to you know, pivot to online. The great thing though, means that this is kind of actually our international launch. I mean, we did launch it in Canada, but, uh, but it's kind of fun to be able to launch it here in this environment. Uh, which is so full of fun AI things for kids to learn. So, um, Josh, you want to try and roll this video? How does the internet always seem to know what I like? Who's making these decisions for me? I am! 
Uh, sorry, let me introduce myself. I'm an algorithm. I live behind the screen, and I can explain how it all works. Follow me. Welcome to my home. Algorithms like me are made by people like you. Human programmers give me instructions by writing code, and then we become programs. Millions of us exist almost everywhere you look. Can you believe it? Okay, but how come you know what I like? Great question. When you watch, search, like, or share online, you create something called data. Algorithms use data to make connections about you and the things you enjoy. We find patterns in your data and then show you stuff we think you'll care about. Voila! Sometimes there are mistakes in my code, though, and I might suggest things you don't like or that upset you. But hey, if you understand how algorithms work, you'll have the power to make your own decisions. Cool. I didn't realize my choices matter more than yours. But wait, there's got to be more to it than that, right? So, the purpose of this video is not to try and explain everything that can or should be explained about algorithms in this short space. Uh, it's, it's really to give kids and adults around them a bit of a tool to start thinking about how the algorithms work. And, you know, I mean, we know that the algorithm in this video is being a little bit in disingenuous when it says that it's going to explain how it all works. I mean, we all know, uh, I think here in it, this conference that, that as algorithms wrap themselves in deeper layers of neural networks, I mean, it gets harder and harder to explain how, how they come to conclusions. But the main thing is to get just a reflection started. And if you go to this website, um, you're gonna see that there are other materials available to kids to get them talking about things like preference bubbles and to get them really thinking about their online habits and and how they want to interact with the algorithms um, to you know change them with their own data and, and think about their own data um, so along with this project we also uh, started going into classrooms and going into places where we could start working with kids and their teachers. And so here you have a little girl who is starting to conceptualize how machine learning works by sorting cookies and puppies and tracking her confidence level about how certain she is that you know it's a cookie or a, a puppy. And maybe starting to think about why that would be easy for her and really hard for a computer. Um, through these kind of activities, we want to really seed some really important ideas that they're going to need going forward. Like the idea that algorithms are not always visible, uh, that, that they can be working in ways that that's not really obvious, so they need to know uh, that they're there. That AI is not magic, and this is very important um, with the current toy market and all of the AI toys that they're going to be working with, that they really understand that somebody made that toy and that there is you know, that it's fun, but there's also a kind of a formula to it. That algorithms are not always right. That it's okay to question some of the answers that the algorithms are coming up with. That the training data matters, not just the quality, but the diversity of the data. And just to sort of get them oriented towards ethical issues that are cropping up and are obviously gonna to continue to be issues for, for, you know, during their lifetime. Issues uh, like bias. We know that algorithms are much better at decide, you know, identifying the faces of white men than they are of women or black men or you know, definitely black women. And that's not because of a failure on the computer necessarily, but uh, often because of a lack of diversity in the data. Uh, transparency uh, in how the algorithms, what the intentions are and what the mechanics are. Uh, privacy, we talked about accountability, and also explainability. And that's a much more important issue also as you're talking about AI that is being used in children's education. 
it's one thing to use AI to help you decide what movie you want to watch. It's another to use it to assess uh, a student's work, to uh, tailor and prompt a student towards a particular learning path. Um, you know, ed AI has a lot of potential in the education world, but it still needs to be kind of at the control of the teachers and bringing in the experience of the teachers alongside it. So again, really our goal here is to keep people talking, to shine a light inside the black box, not to illuminate everything in detail, but at least to, to get people to sort of see the emerging shadows, to highlight the ethical concerns that are gonna be coming up during their lifetime to continue to put a value on humans and natural intelligence, but not to devalue the potential of AI for good because we absolutely recognize and we want kids and their parents to recognize um, all of the tremendous potential that AI has uh, for helping to, to build a more equitable and uh, I mean, really thriving world. Uh, so I wanna here to give a few you know, shout outs to other projects. We're not the only people doing this. And there's some amazing projects in the United States um, with people uh, that we've worked with. Um, at MIT, there's the Gender Shades uh, program um, that really looks at bias in gender and race. There is the Turing Box project that is about helping to give people who are not necessarily specialists or engineers or researchers, the tools to work and um, prototype with AI. And then there's also the Cognimates project, uh, which is run by uh, Stefania, led by Stefania Druga at University of Washington. Uh, so Stefania used to be at MIT where she was the Lego fellow, which uh, is such an amazing job. But she's moved to uh, University of Washington where she's doing some really, really interesting longitudinal studies on how kids interact with AI toys and how understanding a little bit more about how AI works uh, impacts the relationship and the way that, that they view those toys uh, from you know, toys that are maybe smarter than them or smarter than, than they initially think they are to toys that, that are toys you know, and, and that they can view with a sort of healthy skepticism. So I'm just gonna end on a little call to action. Uh, we're here during this time of crisis, but we know uh, this is also a time for potential and a time for, for transformation. And Animal Crossing is such a cool world that allows kids to explore all the ways that AI can be used for creativity, for dreaming, for building, um, but it also has this potential to allow them to really to step back a little bit and think about the things that they like or might not like or how it all works or paths that they could take to better sort of understand what's happening behind the screen. So if I, you know, if everybody could think of one small thing that they could do to be keeping this conversation going to be broadening it and to be really helping this generation to prepare them to use uh, AI in its best applications and with its best intentions. Um, that would be amazing. So I'm just gonna put this screen up. Uh, if you wanna reach out to us, if you wanna make that your small action, that would be great or reach out to me on Twitter or check out our website or check out the Algorithm Literacy Project at algorithmliteracy.org or uh, use the hashtag kids2030. And thank you. Thank you, Josh. And thank you, everybody. Awesome, Juliet. Thanks for the amazing talk. Um, thank you. I am gonna, hold on, let me just go to this view and I am going to clap. I think I can clap. <laughs> Uh, I'll yes. do another. I am going to. Uh... And let's see, are, is there any reaction from the rest of the audience? So first I'm gonna see if the audience has any questions. So does anybody in the Zoom room, any of you presenters wanna ask Juliet a question? Oh, 
Okay, well, while the Zoom room people think about questions, I'm going to ask a question from someone from um, the YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. So one of our other presenters from a different section, Alexandra De Lucia, um, she said, uh, I think her it was more of a statement, but I think it's an interesting sentiment. She said, only if she can teach the same material at a graduate machine learning class. Not just kids don't know this material, but the general public as a whole doesn't know this. And I agree, like I have a PhD in AI and this was not even a part of my curriculum. Like I learned about it when I was in industry and also before industry too, just cause like I saw how biased and racist machine learning algorithms were. So I'm just wondering if you have, if your organization has thought about doing anything for people in graduate school or even undergrads, getting people to um, learn, getting like professionals and people who are learning at the undergraduate and graduate level to like learn about these issues? Um, actually, as a matter of fact, we have, like we're on an advisory committee at, um, at Dawson College in Montreal, uh, which is a really interesting amalgamation of, of liberal arts and, um, and sort of all the other you know, things that, that you can learn um, in a college. And they started a really, really big project around trying to train um, all of their teachers across, even in the humanities, in AI. And they came to us figuring if we could explain it to 10-year-olds, that we would be able to explain it to adults as well. So we actually really have started going into that area and trying to to kind of find that nice sweet spot where where we can be teaching it not just to kids but to adults and also I mean to give Google some credit they have some really interesting materials as well um, like teachable machine and TensorFlow and the kind of materials that they're coming out that are making it much much easier for people across the curriculums to play around um, with with machine learning algorithms and get a, a better sense of how it works. Cool, cool. Another YouTube question. Um, do you find that kids are naturally curious about how or why algorithms and AI work? Or do you think that they just take it for granted? Um, I think some of them are a little bit more naturally curious, but um, I would say that one of the things that been, has been really interesting is we're kind of where we were when we first started with the code in the classroom. Everybody thought like, that's just a crazy idea. Teachers will never be interested in code. And a lot of them weren't. But once we go in and start doing it, the kids realize, right? They realize suddenly that, that these are questions that are there that, that they may be sensed at a certain level but once you're actually like throwing them out into relief. And then what happens is that the kids go home and start talking to their parents and their parents are just like amazed that they're even learning about this. And then the parents kind of take that as permission to start asking questions that, that they might have been uncomfortable with. Because the thing is, you know, this word algorithm, I mean, it's like the tofu of words in that it's so context specific you know, you can talk about the algorithm of tying your shoe all the way to these complex, uh, very difficult to explain deep learning algorithms. And it's a word, because that word is so abstract, it doesn't stick in people's brains, but they all feel like they should know what it is. And so, so working with kids and, and having kids get interested, it gives a lot of adults permission also to get interested in it. So I think I don't know if it's a natural curiosity, but it's a curiosity that's pretty easy to spark. Awesome. So like, how would you even like describe, like explain what an algorithm is to a kid? To a kid? Yeah. Like, like I said, I mean, you can, you can make it as simple as, you know, it's like you're doing, you're, you're using algorithms all the time, right? Your fire drill is an algorithm. It's a step-by-step -step instruction. But we tried with this video to take it to that point where it's kind of actually impacting them. So 
So in terms of an AI algorithm, this is an algorithm that, as we tried to show in that video, is capable of sorting large, large, large sets of data and then is going to make kind of guesses um, about what you like or want. And, and you teach the algorithm by letting it know whether it's right or wrong. So, so we kind of went in through this kind of media literacy lens on, on this particular definition of algorithm. But like I said, it's one of those words that applies to so many things that it really depends what context you go in at. Awesome. Well, thanks for the talk and thanks for the discussion, Juliet. Um, also, if anybody's interested in AI and uh, ethics, um, Kimberly from Kids Code Genus will also be um, running uh, AI and ethics coffee break after this session and after the NLU session. Um, so more discussions about AI and ethics later today. And it's something that um, we need to talk about, you know, like it's it should be required for grad students. It should be required for elementary school students. Like it's such a new technology and it's such a AI, such a new technology and such a pervasive technology. And we all need to be um, more um, aware of the implications of what we're building. All right. So thank you, Juliet. Um, right. Next. Thank is you, David. Josh. Oh, thanks, thank you. Thanks for everything that you've done to get, get, get us through this. <laughs> yeah. Bye. Sorry again for the delay, everybody, but we're back. <laughs> All right. Um, David, you are next.